Okay, we have Splash's litter. This is her teeny weeny little boy. He's the only boy, and he is the only teacup. The predicted weights are on each individual's page, but he only weighs two ounces, which gives him a predicted weight of two pounds at this point, but I'm thinking that's kind of not really realistic, so I'm thinking more like 2.2, 2.3. Daddy's only 2.7. Mommy's really small, too. She's like four and a half. This one, all the other three are girls. This one is a fawn. She's all fawn. Looks like she might have no tan markings, I don't think. The other one has the tan markings. That's this one. I'm not sure if that's tan markings or white or white and tan at this point. Excuse my nails if they're a little dirty. I was delivering puppy. I'm very puppies, and I'm very hands-on. And that afterbirth kind of stays with you for a couple of days, even if you scrub it off and use bleach. It's still just. And then I cut the cords, not the cords, the the nails, the dew claws, and I have to use that bleed stop, and that gets my nails dirty again, and they just really stay dirty for a while. It's just part of being a breeder. This one, another little girl. She's so cute. She is the Merle. Now, people say don't get Merles because Merles are prone to being deaf or blind. That's true. If you are dealing with an inexperienced breeder that doesn't know the lines of their dogs, you can get blind and deaf Merles. I never have because I made sure that the first original Merle that I got came from somebody that was very reliable. And then... I've been doing it with that particular line for about 18 years now, and I've never had one blind or deaf puppy. I don't really breed that many murals, but still, statistically, I'm at zero blind and deaf murals. Uh, it just it doesn't happen. They don't even have reduced eyes. A lot of them, if you look them up, they have these reduced eyes. Um, but murals, the mother's a mural, and if you know what you're doing and you breed murals, they are so beautiful. Just gorgeous with the little spots all over. But what's scary is if, like this this one here, you can tell she's a Merle. But then this is where the problem with Merles comes in, is when they get older. And they kind of, some of them will kind of lose their Merle coloring. And then if you're selling to breeders, which I don't, hopefully. I mean, I, I would do my best not to. But if you're selling to breeders and you don't let the person know who's getting the Merle that they have a merle and then they end up thinking that they have a non-merle then they breed that to a merle then you're breeding merle to merle and that's when you get the blind and deaf puppies if you're going to breed merles you have to breed to the other side of the pedigree has to have no merles for generations and generations because that's where the lethal gene will pop up and that's exactly what i do i i know my lines and there's nothing on the other side of of um Simon's pedigree that has Merle. Zero. So, I mean, unless it goes back 20 years, 20, I've been doing this for 24 years. If it goes back about 20 years, it might, but I doubt it. Doubt it, because I haven't had any problems. They're so cute. They're a little blue girl. All right, video's long enough.